Hi students, today we are going to see a quick revision of screening chapter. This screening chapter has very important questions on sensitivity, specificity, predictive value, validity, etc. Let us quickly revise this chapter screening. First of all, what is the purpose of screening? Basically, we have to identify the subclinical cases which are submerged. We are able to see only this portion usually in the clinical side. But there are certain cases like subclinical cases, they don't manifest with symptoms. Carrier state, they carry the disease virus or bacteria, but they don't manifest. And undiagnosed, they don't know that they have a disease. So these are the people who come under this submerged portion. So to identify them, we need screening. So then what is the difference between screening test and diagnostic test? Screening test is done apparently on a healthy person whereas diagnostic test is done on those people who have sickness. Screening test is done among a group of people whereas here it is applied to single patient. Screening test the results are arbitrary it is not final whereas diagnosis is very important for an individual patient to accurately diagnose this is the cause. Then it is based on only one criterion or cutoff point. Whereas clinical cases, in addition to the diagnostic test, there are various other things like uh, symptoms, signs, etc. Based on this, the clinician will come to a conclusion. And the screen test is less accurate, diagnostic test is more accurate, it is less expensive, the uh, screening test and uh, clinical test is more expensive. Screening test is not a basis for treatment, it is only for identification of cases. Then to confirm them, we use diagnostic test. So diagnostic test is used as a basis for treatment. Usually for screening test, the initiative comes from the investigator who would like to identify a large group of cases. Whereas for diagnostic test, the initiative comes from the patient with a complaint. So next is what is the benefit of screening? The benefit of screening is the lead time which we get because of screening. Because for any diseases, usually there is first possible point of diagnosis. This is the time a disease can be identified by a screening test. Whereas usually the diseases are diagnosed because of the initiative from the patient that is usual time of diagnosis. So if we actually identify the disease here, the benefit will be much better. The outcome will be B which is a good outcome compared to A which is a comparatively a not so good item compared to B. So the benefit usually is B minus A. So the lead time is very important but one thing we should not miss here is the final critical diagnosis thing. So the time between the first possible point and final critical diagnosis is called the screening time. This screening time is the time within which we can do uh, the screening test. After this period, after the final critical diagnosis period, there is no use of doing a screening test. And lead time, it is a time which we gain, the advantage which we gain because of screening test. Next is what are the uses of screening? Screening is for case detection or screening is for case or disease control. Screening is used for research and screening is used for health education. So when we use the screening for case detection, that is perspective screening. So among pregnant mothers, we screen for various diseases. We screen for diabetes also. Among neonates, near newborn, we screen for any congenital anomalies and congenital diseases. For persons who have crossed above 40 years, we screen for a diabetes or hypertension. For women, we screen for any cervical carcinoma or breast carcinoma. These are all screening examples for perspective screening. Next, next is prospective screening. Here the people are diagnosed for the screen for the benefit of others for example the immigrants who are coming from uh, tuberculosis endemic area he is coming to our country then we have to screen them properly only then we can let them into the country otherwise people in our country will get affected so screening of immigrants for tuberculosis can be an example of prospective screening next is for research purpose to understand the natural history of diseases mainly chronic diseases like hypertension cancer we really don't know what is the point when the cancer started and when it uh, started growing and when actually it manifested so to understand that we need screening so in addition educating the public health education and raising the public awareness during the screening program is another use of screening because when we go for chronic disease screening we can educate the public simultaneously regarding what is hypertension what is diabetes how it manifests how to take treatment if you don't treat if you don't take treatment what are the side effects and uh, complications so that is a time for giving health education also next what are the types of screening basically you have to understand 
there is mass screening that is a screening of whole population or subgroup of population for example irrespective of a person's immune status his social status and various other parameters just you include everybody to screen tuberculosis that becomes mass screening then high risk or selective screening for cancer cervix among these uh, social groups especially lower socioeconomic strata it is very common cancer cervix so maybe uh, concentrating on that high risk group alone can yield more cases so that is high risk or selective screening then we have multiphasic screening here in multiphasic screening there is one single disease for example diabetes mellitus for diabetes mellitus not only we screen for blood sugar level we also screen for the weight height of the person obesity status of the person then the hypertension blood pressure status what is the lipid profile what is the renal parameters when we screen for everything it becomes multiphasic screening for a single disease then this this forms the core of uh, screening chapter the screening test criteria the screening test how it should be first of all it should be acceptable it should be acceptable to the patient you cannot do a cancer cervix screening per rectal examination or per vaginal examination without the consent of the patient so it should be acceptable first of all then there are two things which are very important in screening we say sensitivity and specificity which forms the validity that is the accuracy how accurately we are able to detect the disease that is the uh, concept here so basically in uh, sensitivity and specificity what we do in sensitivity we identify the true positives those who really have the disease we are identifying them that is the sensitivity we did a screening test for 100 people out of these 100 people 99 people are truly positive then it becomes 99% sensitivity similarly in specificity what do we see true negatives we see so when we do the same test uh, 100 uh, out of 100 99 people are negative for the truly negative for the disease then that becomes 99% specificity so in reality both of this cannot occur together when we do a test uh, you cannot expect the test to be 99% sensitive and 99% specific it is highly difficult to achieve that level but we tend to use the screening test in such a way that it is highly specific and also highly sensitive then what is this predictive value the predictive value says the diagnostic power of your test so what is the positive predictive value means is the diagnostic power that this test has accurately identified the disease in question the test is highly predictive positively predictive what is negative predictive value when that test is clearly identifying that the person is not having the disease so the diagnostic power is very good that is a high negative predictive value so these factors actually sensitivity specificity and predictive value they ensure the validity of a screening test and yield yield is based on all these factors what is the ultimate fruit we want to get from a screening test we want to identify more number of people with the disease and that is called yield that yield is dependent upon all these factors sensitivity specificity predictive value all these factors will determine the yield so till now we saw two things one is acceptability another one is validity the third one which we have to concentrate for a screening test is repeatability because there could be variation in measuring the parameters like uh, you can measure my bp differently i can measure my bp differently somebody else can measure my bp differently so there will be lot of variations so this variation could be observer variation so this observer variation could be intra observer variation where the same person is measuring two times and two times he is recording two different readings that is intra whereas inter observer variation means there are two different persons who are recording the bp and they measure differently that becomes intra observer variation then we have biological variation the biological variation is a person will be very cool or am say relaxed in the morning the same person will be tensed in the mid morning hours or lunch hours because of his work pressure then again in the evening the person will be relaxed so the same person's bp will vary accordingly he will be very relaxed in the morning his bp will be low he will his bp will be high in the afternoon again his bp will come down in the evening so what time you are going to measure determines the bp so this is biological variation which will affect the repeatability value and third factor which affects repeatability is the technical part 
technical error the machine may be working improper, improperly which can affect the repeatability factor so three things we have to really uh, write in detail which is acceptability validity and repeatability so other than these three the other criteria we take for uh, screening are uh, simplicity simplicity how simple is the test how safe is the test how speed we can do this rapidity and how easily it can be administered so these are minor factors which we consider why we consider to apply a screening test for a particular disease next is this table always remember there are many problems given with respect to sensitivity specificity positive predictive value negative predictive value and there are formulas but you have to remember one thing very very clearly where what is a what is b what is c what is d that is the most important thing and for that to be precise what you have to concentrate this area so always remember this area which is the column heading the column heading the column will be usually it will be the gold standard remember this just remember this key concept and you will be able to crack all the problems easily always remember this thing alone this area is always the gold standard test it can be a gold standard test or it can be a gold standard treatment it can be anything but this is the ultimate this is the gold standard and always the rose heading the left side rose heading will be the screening test under question so whatever screening test you are going to do you want to test the uh, effectiveness of the screening test or you want to test the validity of the screening test you want to test the predictive value of the test whatever it is the test thing will always come in the left and the gold standard will always come in the column heading if you don't make a mistake here uh, remaining all will be solved easily because the problem and the formulas are very very easy to follow if it's a straightforward question like here uh, the person is diseased not diseased you are going to test the screening test so it is easy to put for you the disease under question here diseased not diseased and here the test and another test but sometimes the question will be asked comparison between two tests so in this situation you will get confused that is why i am telling you this the gold standard test when there are two tests gold standard test will come here and the screening test which we are going to test will come in the left side always remember this basic principle put this inside your brain so you will not get confused so if you put this two things correctly then we can easily put a a is always true positive in the column b is always false positive in the column c is false negative d is true negative and uh, uh, put the row total here a plus b put the uh, uh, a plus b and c plus d and put the column total here a plus c and b plus d so don't change this alphabets that is second important rule a b c d this is the way you have to write some people may write a b c d then your entire problem goes wrong and uh, you will be scratching your head what mistake you did thereafter remaining things are very easy so what is that easy thing sensitivity sensitivity is a by a plus c into 100 specificity d by b plus d into 100 so the predictive value of your uh, positive test will be a divided by a plus b for predictive value of a negative test b by c plus d into 100 so that is a positive predictive value negative predictive value you apply the formula last is the concept of border line so border line for diseases border line for screening test see for some diseases like phenylketonuria so this is the uh, people who are affected with phenylketonuria whereas this is the normal people so there is a inter intersection between the two so among the normal people there could be some people with phenylketonuria among the diseased people some people will be normal so usually to avoid this problem of borderline we generally take the midpoint between the two the intersection between the two that is e this e is the point which we keep as the cut off so if we keep this as the cut off we will minimize the false negative and false positive similarly this is unimodal distribution chronic diseases like diabetes hypertension what do we take the blood pressure level or blood pressure level we used to take 
so the blood pressure level or blood sugar level usually when it is high how much is high that is the problem here that is the problem of borderline suppose if it if we keep the cut off at c so the what it means those who are above this cut off they all will be diseased so what will happen is the sensitivity will be very high because you are keeping the cut off lower at lower level for example our blood sugar level our fasting blood sugar level if you keep it as 120 then we will have less number of cases above 120 suppose if we keep the same fasting blood sugar level as 100 then what you uh, those who are above 100 fasting are diabetics if you say then what will happen there will be more number of cases because the test is highly sensitive but at the same time you can have many false positives but if you keep the cutoff as D instead of 100 we keep it as 120 only those who are above 120 fasting will be diseased in this situation what will happen the test will be highly specific you will be clearly catching those who have disease but at the same time you will be miss many people who are really positive so there will be more number of false negatives so this is the problem of borderline either you can keep it at c or you can keep it at d but this is a clinical question which should be answered by research i hope this screening video was useful for you if you have doubts put your comment below and if you want any other topics to be discussed please put that in the comment below if you like this video press the like button and if you have not yet subscribed my channel please subscribe my channel community medicine made easy meet you all in the next video until then goodbye from dr karthike thank you